<laughs> we were able to go and pick up our bees. They're sitting in the back of the car. So now I'm gonna take them into the garage. Look at them, they're beautiful. I wonder if you can hear them buzz. and ready to move our package of bees into the hive. And I have on my whole bee suit. Um, it's been years since I've kept bees, so I'm not like the beekeepers that don't wear anything and no gloves. I want a suit on. And I have here, I have my gloves I'm gonna put on, my hive tool, and my smoker, and it's been going the whole time since I suited up, so I know I've got a good burn, steady burn going in there. So, I'm gonna just pull my my bee veil on and I really like this suit because I've been in that situation where the bees get up under your veil and I mean even if you've been doing it a while that is not I don't know it, I, I don't want to be freaking out in front of the bees I want them to to just feel at ease and if I'm freaking out I worry that it's going to make them freak out Okay, so, and I like this particular veil because you can pull it out so it's not right against your face because I've been stung through the veil because it was right against my face. So this is, this is kind of nice. Okay, so I'm gonna put my gloves on and then, now you're probably going, why are you in the garage? Well, it's still cold here, but the bees need to be put in their place. And so I talked to other local beekeepers and one guy said what he does is he just installs the bees in the hive and then keeps them in the garage. And then once the weather is better and not so unpredictable, I mean, we had snow yesterday and today the sun is out and bright and it feels like spring. So when the weather is unpredictable, you want to um, make sure that they're not gonna freeze at night. So. I'm gonna keep them in the garage and then when, once there, the weather's good, I will slowly move them into position. Each day I'll move the hive uh, closer and closer to its final position so they don't get too disoriented trying to refine the hive. So I have here a frame. I'm doing frames without any honeycomb, any, any um, base in them, but I have one because I want them to be able to get started really quickly and they can build the comb pretty quickly on these. I have an elastic on, on there to hold the queen box when I get that out. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so first I'm gonna smoke the bees just a little um, to kind of keep things calm. And I can hear them in the buzz. And this little tag here has the queen, so I'm gonna just bring up the can of food. Um, this is very exciting because I've really been waiting all winter to do this. I've been so excited. And of course the bees just came yesterday. So I'm gonna grab a hold of that queen tag, work this out. Now some bees might go ahead and come out and that's okay. They'll probably be on the can. Oh, and I'm so sad because I don't ever want to smash any bees, but okay, there we go. Now I'm going to work that queen cage out. So there's the queen in the cage. This is very exciting. Now I need to make sure she's in there and alive. So uh, this is where they're going to go. So I'm going to just shake them off. And I'm looking for my queen. And I see her in there. Very good. Okay, so now what I wanna do is there's a little uh, cork in the end of that queen cage. Don't wanna kill any of these pretty bees. So I'm gonna take that cork out 
because it looks like looks like they're trying to you know help her they're not you, uh, one thing i read is if they're on the cage biting the cage and like trying to get at the queen that means they haven't accepted her but if they're just kind of walking back and forth and and things seem calm and casual they probably have accepted her so i'm having trouble getting that cork out and there should be in there a little bit of sugar that I'm actually not seeing. And so I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and install her right now with that cork in and just give everybody a few days to get oriented, a day or two, and then I'll come and take that cork out and, and let the, key, the queen out. So for now, all these bees are just huddled around. So I'm going to, um, and I'm surprised because the queen is in there alone. She doesn't have attendants in the box with her. So we're going to have to eventually get that out, but the bees can come up and help her. So I'm going to just put this on the frame that has the, the foundation on it, and I'm gonna tip it down so that um, if the, the cork does come start to come out or they start eating at it, it won't fall into the queen and she can just come out this way. Okay, so the queen's in. So once the queen is in, the others should follow because now they're used to her pheromones or her, yeah, I guess it's pheromones. I have several frames out. And so now we're going to just take that can and I can tell there's still food in there. I'm just gonna shake that off, shake the bees off, get them out. Now, normally I would be doing this outside, of course, but you know, conditions are that it's gonna be in the garage. So now, I'm just gonna take this box that has all these beautiful bees, look at that, and I'm just gonna give it a tap down And then I'm going to start shaking. Yeah. And then they go. And it looks like I'm going to need to give it another tap. And into the hive. I don't know, our garage might be kind of an interesting place for a time until they calm down. So. What I'll probably need to do is warn the kids and not have them maybe come hanging out in the garage until things are calm. But it shouldn't take long for the bees to calm down and find home. Man, there are a lot of bees in here. Let's see if I can get them. Oh, darn it. I didn't mean to put them out on the floor. I've got to be careful not to step on them now. I think what I'm going to do is let them find their way. So I'm going to put this at the opening of the hive. And I feel really bad about these bees. This suit is a little bit hard to bend over in. Okay, so those are in. I'm hoping I'm going to watch out for these and hope that they make it in. Um, all right, so the queen, oh, how interesting. Here's something cool. The, the bees have surrounded the queen cage. So they're, they're starting to spread, to spread her pheromones from bee to bee to bee in the hive. And so what will eventually happen is they'll all get her scent and start to understand where she is. And then, and then they'll go in. So, I'm going to just slide this over. I want the bees to still be able to attend to the queen, so I'm not going to completely close that gap because they need to get to the front of that box that she's in to feed her and take care of her, but I'll try to take care of some of this bee space that's here. We don't want them. I'm really excited to see how they, how they build this comb. Uh, in a blank frame, because when I kept these years ago, I used foundation on all of them, and I'm excited to see just that naturally built comb. Okay, they're in. 
uh, these will fly up out and eventually come right into the right into the hive. Now, there's always a few that that die in the transportation process. So now I'm going to put. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and put on the top board. It's, I'm going to. This is this is a queen excluder because I don't want her wandering around into the top. And then the, and then the lid. For now, I'm keeping just the brood chamber. So, now, I, uh, because they've been traveling and because we don't have blooming flowers that I can see yet, I'm going to need to feed them. And so, uh, let me go grab that. So I have a quart jar that uh, my husband poked a whole bunch of holes in the top for me, lid on tight. And so it, in here is, is one part sugar to two parts water. So because it's a quart jar, I did one and a third cups of sugar and then uh, the three and two thirds cup of water. So I'm gonna take off that little thing there and I'm going to just flip this quickly and there, there will be some that drips out and then it creates that vacuum. And I'm gonna put that right over the top of that hole. And then the bees can come up and just slurp up some syrup and then um, go back to their work. So I'm going to take the flow frames out of this. I'm gonna put the flow hive, uh, that frame around this to protect the bottle. And then I'll put the lid on and we're done. Yep, she's still alive. She's in there. A little plug. I'm going to use a screw to see if I can get that little plug out. And well, she's out. Yikes, I hope she didn't fly away. Well, I see a bee with um, with pollen on its legs. That's a good sign. Okay. Well, she's out, and I'm hoping she's in there. Mm. So there's something blooming because there was a bee with pollen. So that's a very good sign. I don't see any comb being built. Maybe now that the queen is released. Release the Kraken! <laughs> maybe now that that's, she's released, maybe they'll do more comb building. Well, I guess the best we can do is just let them get back to work. Okay. And they drink that whole bottle of syrup. It took about two days. So I've got new food here for them. So they're drinking it. So that means there's not much for them to forage right now. Once they, once there's enough to forage, they'll probably stop drinking that.